it's Tuesday. Um, it is December 20th, 2022. I'm in this. Um, Lewis came up this morning um, and he wanted to show me something. He's been doing um, a lot between Santa Claus and near-death experiences. And so he wanted me to watch uh, Jeff Mara, who had on someone called Vincent Tolman. Um, and just to gain depth perception, Diffenacht, um, I was uh, watching it, and again, I consciously, I go through um, what he was saying. I can conceptualize it. In fact, listening to him, it's a lot easier um, to connect the dots and to fully understand and immerse myself in being consciously aware of what he's saying, his vocabulary. Um, there was something I, he mentioned, and again, I don't know if, if these are learned or trained or programmed. I don't know his quantum entanglement along his journey. Um, he mentioned something about three that we're in a three dimension. I'm like, oh, all right, well, at infinity and trinity, that makes sense. At depth perception and constructurally and astrologically and cosmology, like anchoring myself in another, like he was also speaking of um, like the light beings and the um, finding the tribe kind of thing. He also said that in his Christian training, they mentioned thing like the magic escalator to heaven. And I'm like, oh, I like him already because it's not necessarily to heaven. It's just the way we explain time and space. At least it's the way I explain the Bra to Brady Bunch and the conceptual artists at that level of consciousness. He's just one step. He is, if he, his step says 77, 1977 for 19th century escalator that arrived and just kept moving in time and space moves in one direction for most humans. Great. I'm on the step that says 78, whether it's side by side, whether he's one, I mean, he's a tall guy to begin with, but whatever. I mean, I'm only the size of a rocket. So here we are at stand at ice SOs in the, in the field at standards of with no deviation. Um, so there's that, um, so that's where the concept of magic escalator, if time and space only moves in a linear fashion, um, and there's some depth perception, even between the years in cosmology, I explain it as a magic escalator, but like, whatever on that, don't want to like get like held up by the crazy social workers in their failing at multiple levels. And now they're coming after the humans. Um, so there's that. So then he spoke about something called a Drake, which again, like I'm not about open borders, but I am about open mindedness and respect of others, um, and listening at times, um, to their experiences. Uh, I just, he had a very in-depth and spiritual, surreal experience, which I found very interesting. Then also they had on their JMP uh, 619, which I thought was interesting at Jeff Mara. I guess that's whatever umbrella he uses in podcasts to protect his free speech. I'm assuming, again, I don't really know. It's what was on his podcast. So I was just looking for symbols. I got something going on with J. Crew and the JMG for wherever I stepped out of time and space in order to have that whatever in, uh, it looked like 69 West row, but it wasn't. Um, 
so that happened. Um, my son, Alexander, um, again, Alexander and I in human, like there's some really important scientific research somewhere about time and space. How does time move about consciousness, collective consciousness, uh, about purpose, about humans existence and so on and so forth. Like that's the conversation I need to be in. I always needed to be in, especially the way I was born and how I arrived in, I looked around at the family I arrived to and realized I was in, I was in the right dimension. I just did not know who directed the scene and stuck me in this calamity of errors. Um, so, um, there's that. So I don't know if like my father now, the gray beard of wisdom, if, cause I even said to him, I was like, are you trying to say like, by showing me this this morning, like you're, you're my Drake. And he's like, you could say that. And I'm like, right. Yeah, I could. But mm, I'm like, uh, all right. So in this time capsule, I guess that's who he would be. Um, so the ordained section doesn't get like all ordinance and requirements of craziness. Um, for static control. Um, being I'm stuck in some kind of stasis. <sighs> so, um, there's that. And then I'm thinking, I'm listening to him. Some of the things I don't, like at first he said density. And then I'm thinking, define den. And then in some progression, I was like, mm maybe. And I had to like work myself through some of the linguistical prowess that he chose to use for his representation, which for the most part, I really not critiquing. I just, I was there. I enjoyed the depth that he had acquired. Um, and some of the unusual way of explaining it. So anyhow, so between me and Alexander, I know that there are scary scientists somewhere that write papers for a living, write books. They profess at like these really like, woohoo, like to the next gens. And then they have these like really great conversations and they get to do like really great things and they get paid for it. And here I am, I just was born and then I birthed another and I actually bring legitimacy to their, so others can't challenge them and call them junk scientists. I mean, like there's actual physical, tangible evidence that the research development that they did and their entire life's existence, purpose, and worth for which they like to be honored, I bring verification that they're not a bunch of frauds. And that they're not studying and promoting junk science. So I really thought that that was some tangible worth I brought into the world. I just really don't understand why or how I've been completely ignored and then hurt for so many years. I mean, like, I find it really hard to believe that I'm not desirable by someone in the somebody special category for, for certain. I find this incredibly insulting the way that this entire time capsule, it's not intelligent design. It's, it's, in if this is intelligent design, the way that my life unfolded, then there is some real serious problems at human resources and programming for certain with the amount of, or the, the small amount of opportunity that was shown being that I was born as an infinity Trinity. And then on, on a standard measure of human calculations for calcaneous calculus, there are those that study this and take much pride in this for which so do I, 
It's just I've been withheld out of that echelon of importance for I don't know what reason. But yet I bring validity to their entire life's purpose and work. So they're frauds without someone like me verifying and a point of where it's no longer theory, it's now practicality. So that's where I'm real confused where these HR masters and mastery are so disconnected from my actual time capsule and my ability to get to something that's worth living for. Like this everyday cycle and with Alexander being taken away from me, there's no purpose here. And here's the other thing I was thinking about. I'm like, so they forced this crazy donkey, Jason Peter Rumor, 1976, into my space. I said on the phone to the FSB, the feds, the FINRA, the SEC, the whatever was listening, don't call me. I have a boyfriend. He's international. And I don't want to, I, I don't want to go out with you. I don't want to see you. I don't want to go for ice cream. I don't want to hang out. Leave me alone. Boom. I then verified with Niklaus that I didn't want anything to do with Romer. And Niklaus was really pissed about this Romer, about this Jason thing. He seemed to know something I didn't. And so then somehow the turn happened and it went down this path by block. Somebody took Niklaus away internationally or unbeknownst to me how it happened. And then left me with this Jason problem. Jason problem then unfolded in a cascading problems. He was a loser. He had no future. None. He's not noble. He was not fashionista approved. He wasn't even in any form of intelligent community. He failed at everything before. And then my dad had to try to prop him up. I mean, it, it, this is a terrible story especially for an infinity and a trinity and a spiritual, like, I mean, this is disgusting what humans have created. And so now I've got, so then they decide to let him in NYPD. They uniform him. They give him some form of inside intelligence inside New York city. So now he comes after me and tries to murder me. Now this becomes a problem after my whole entire midsection and lower extremities were carved up for holding the baby I didn't want to have with this guy. So, I mean, my life is going completely off rails and there's not even a handhold. I tell my parents and it's like, they just brush it off. Like, it's not what you think. He tried murdering me in my sleep. You don't think like, I'm mean, like, where do I go? No help. So now I got my parental units not helpful while I'm being abused. Domestic violence. I don't know where to report it. I told some people at work. I told my parents. I told the doctor. But yet, my life keeps getting worse. And then there was... Um, then all of a sudden, later on, as if, like, I'm just quiet with my kids trying to survive. And then T for 1975 shows up in this blacksmith introduction from Frank, who was out the door, who was also told not to get involved or stay or do whatever. But he did anyway at Homeland Security Problems. So now I'm like... Now what do I do? So now I've got Tia Frio 1975. And he's an insult to my intelligence. Just so HR Masters is at like that level is clear. They intelligently infuse the first loser that I never wanted to be with, with some area intelligence that he I don't even have access to, but he does. So he's growing more strong. 
and more powerful and more frightening because I don't know anything about him and I keep the children and myself sectioned away from him. So I protect myself kind of sort of. I'm not living according to this Vincent guy, my authentic self, except I did have the mojito guy. He showed up and he was like, I, I don't know if he said he needed me to unplug for a minute, but like, he was like, I know that you don't want to be with him. I'm like, oh, great. So they sent somebody who knows, but then something happened where I got really sick after drinking one of the drinks or a few of the drinks. And then I passed out and I lost time. So there's this succession of problematic. And then the last person I kept wanting to leave, but wouldn't and stuck to my shoe, like a piece of toilet paper from the public restroom that I just can't seem to shake off. I mean, it's, he's an insult to the intelligence. Every time he opens his mouth, it's a lie. He's a pathological liar. Every time he opens his mouth, it's some kind of lie. If, when I was in business and real estate, it was always that he did it. It was his success. And I'm like, I don't, and I'm not argumentative. So I just stayed silent. I'm like this, he's a defect in human existence and humankind. Like there is no intelligence coming out of his mouth. None. In fact, it's a complete opposite. And if I had to speak to the HR department at HQ at union reps, I would let you know that Tia Frio, 1975, everywhere we went, he was an insult to my intelligence. But I didn't know how do I disconnect from this because it won't leave me alone. And then I have the compounded problem of the first piece of crap that I didn't want to be involved with that now they're feeding intelligence to growing more powerful and more strong while I'm in the field, like just waiting for an HR HQ, like HR masters, like, don't you have any like people you're in charge of that might be a better suitable fit than the insult to my intelligence while I'm on American soil? Just curious. Like, I mean, how does this work where humans are actually good ever? All I see is a whole lot of world of hurt and people who just really don't care. They conspire and they inspire themselves to do all the wrong things. And it's horrible. And I've been just dragged through this the entire time. And there's no way for me to escape. So now I've got my father in his 70s. Now he's an old man. And now he's showing me near-death experience kids as and like as some kind of Drake, which I don't even know what that really means or what that's associated with. What house of worship is that in? I have no idea. They're talking about power hour. Right, yeah. Well, here's the thing. I need, I'm doing the see the BS in the morning because I've lost touch with some of the network to whatever's going on in Long Island. And like, I'm not even at the front of the room teaching. I'm in the crowd just trying to blend in. That's how inauthentic this world is on Long Island. It's star one nine seven eight star eight three seven eight. Nicole Ketterizite's Earth Solar System Milky Way Universe Galaxy is broken, and it's Bayside Station, Bayside, New York one one three six one.